in the know. Non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. Hmm. Let's play this instead. Mm-hmm. Uh, Declan was about ready to lay down for a nap. Jeb was about to run over to... Or maybe he was already at Park Tavern, sip sip down a Surly on a thirsty Thursday. Wild's about to start. Exactly right. The Wild. Um, oh. Old Macadac's just been staring at his computer screen for five hours, not blinking, just waiting for breaking news. Yep. And we do have it. The Vikings have fired Ed Donatel, the one-year defensive coordinator, the beleaguered one-year defensive coordinator. I'm just going to read you the statement here in very small type from Kevin O'Connell. By the way, uh, Purple Daily presented by our friends over at TCL. I should throw a shout-out to them real quick. No matter what you watch, TCL has award-winning TVs for any budget, any space, all with stunning picture quality. And TCL makes more than just TVs. They offer mobile products, audio devices, home appliances. TCL brings you joy and simplicity through innovative technology. Uh, Old Ed might have some, some more time to watch his TCL TV, unfortunately. So here's the statement from Kevin O'Connell. Today, I informed Ed Donatel we will be going in a different direction at defensive coordinator in 2023. Well, this was a difficult decision because of the tremendous respect I have for Ed as a person and a coach. I believe it is the right move for the future of our football team. I want to thank Ed for his commitment to the Vikings this past season, for the positive impact he had on our players and coaches, and for his role in helping me as a first-year head coach lay this foundation. We all wish Ed and his wife, Sherry, only the best in the future. We will immediately begin our search to fill this critical role as we continue to build a championship standard for the Minnesota Vikings. Judd, your thoughts? Okay, I got to fire the tech machine up because it was down for a second. Just a little while. How long does it take to crank to crank up the, the tech, tech machine? machine? Hold on a second here. It's old school. It's like a crank. <laughs> okay, here we go. This was as much as I think there was uh, some folks who feared that this move was not going to be made because it was not announced on Wednesday, as Roy C said today, and he's exactly right. Usually, a lot of times, what they'll do, they will announce. Like I, I do see teams fire assistant coaches at their season-ending press conference, but it's not unheard of to not do that. And so, instead of taking a ton of questions where the person answering them has to be off the cuff. Uh, a statement like you just read, Phil Mackey, is issued and, you know, you wish everyone the best. But, um, you know, this is a a few quick thoughts here of things that we have talked about, but perhaps are worth repeating right now. Uh, The move was inevitable. Um, Ed Ed Donatel was the guy that knew Vic Fangio and in Kevin O'Connell's mind. And I, I believe his friend Brandon Staley, who worked with Fangio and Donatel, also spoke highly of Ed. So, you know, in O'Connell's mind, he was getting something that he clearly did not get. Um, Kevin O'Connell seems to me to be the type of guy, right or wrong, and, you know, I think a lot of people are annoyed by control freaks. He's a control freak on offense, but I think that he wants to empower his D.C. to do their job. And you probably knew it was over after the loss at Detroit, where Kevin O'Connell had to come out the next day or a couple of days after and say, we need to do this, we don't do that, we need to do... And, you know, I felt like... Ed did a few of those things for a while and then lapsed back into his three, four philosophy that he had learned from Fangio and really hadn't learned all that well. All of that being said, and while I think that the firing is is well earned, if that is um, the right phrasing, the thing about this is, you know, of all the good that O'Connell has done and Quasi to a certain degree as well, this is an indictment of O'Connell and the fact that he clearly chose the wrong guy. Yeah. Now, can he get this right? That would be fantastic. It but shipwrecked their season, too, by the way. Hiring exactly. the wrong guys shipwrecked their season. Yep. And if you are going to give the autonomy that Kevin O'Connell clearly wanted to give to Ed, you need to make damn sure that the day that you say, I'm going with Ed Donatel, it's the right guy. Like, there's no room for If you're going to trust him, which he did, you can't be, be like, oh, whoops, I can take control. Kevin O'Connell doesn't have the time. I don't even know when it comes to defense if he has the knowledge. Like, it's it's two very different sides of the football. So, we would criticize, rightfully so, Zimmer, if he had been in the same predicament. 
So it's only fair that we keep in mind that this was not a Ed Donatel sucked and Kevin O'Connell is doing a great job. This is an indictment of Kevin too. And he needs to get this higher right this time. I don't, you know what? We can talk about the scheme. We'll talk about all of those things on future shows and it's going to be fun to talk about. But just from a fundamental starting point of who he hires, 2023, you need to get this right now. Yep, this is... um... You know, there's, I don't know that Ed Donatel had the best chance just based on some of the players. On one hand, I think, man, the Viking, Patrick Peterson was pretty damn good this season. Daniil Hunter was healthy and productive, and Zadarius was excellent the first half of the season before maybe age, injury, and attrition. They got a couple good interior defensive linemen. They got, you know, still Harrison Smith is not totally broken. It, It never felt like, it never felt like the pieces added up to a great whole pie. You know, it, it was, but then again, you look at some of the pieces you're like, well, of the 11 starters on defense, five of them are 30 years of age or older. And you really saw middle of the field, especially, I don't care what scheme you were running. Eric Hendricks and Jordan Hicks right. really had a hard time keeping up with running backs, tight ends, mobile quarterbacks in space. You saw, I mean, the giants just exposed those guys all over the place and Patrick Peterson. So, I, th- I think there's there's room to say two things with the personnel that the personnel wasn't as bad as being ranked 31st in the league, but Ed was given a lot of old dusty pieces here. The speed of that defense is not what you see around the league with some of the better defenses, and it doesn't. You know, this offense has been pretty rock solid so far under Kevin O'Connell, and assuming they bring Kirk Cousins back. And Justin Jefferson and TJ Hawkinson, they've got two pillar offensive tackles. They're going to score points again next year. Can they add some pieces to go from like eighth in in scoring to maybe fifth? We're going to talk about that all offseason. This defense doesn't need to go from 31st to second. Right. It needs to go from 31st to 18th, 14th, somewhere in there. But I have a feeling not only are you going to see a new defensive coordinator here, you're going to see a lot of new faces and starters on defense too, because you can't just push forward with half your starters being over the age of 30. So this is, this is going to be a, this might be a total blow it up job for the defense. And the Vikings might be thinking how much worse can it be? If we just got rid of like four veterans, save some cap space, maybe you can get a draft pick in there for somebody and you just roll with younger players, faster players you know, can it really be that much worse than 400 plus points allowed and 31st in yardage? I mean, how they're they're kind of already at the bottom of the hill here defensively. I think the most important thing too with this, as the the process now is uh, is vetted out, is they need to find Kevin O'Connell needs to find a defensive coordinator who, beyond his scheme and beliefs in football, is adaptable to what he has. My biggest gripe with Donatel uh, is yes he didn't have a bunch of good pieces but you know what he didn't do he didn't maximize for the most part any of the pieces he did have there there wasn't a come to Jesus four games in of you know what I'm trying to do something and it makes no sense it was a very old school football mentality which as I've said before runs very counter to how O'Connell coaches Mm -hmm. O'Connell has a scheme but make no mistake, he also did a very good job, I think, of figuring out really good ways to take the pieces of the offensive puzzle and adapt them to his scheme as it could be adapted. Uh, it felt to me like Donatel, you know, he kept saying last week, you know, we're going to show people, we're going to, it was almost like we're going to show them my system. This is how it's going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what? In 1984, that's problematic, but the expectation around the entire league at that time was, okay, the defensive players better damn well adapt. In 2022, 23, that's not the philosophy. The philosophy is, oh, I run this scheme, but Daniel Hunter is not as good doing this, so I need to to do that. You know, it's it's Eric Kendricks still has a skill set, but in in no way, shape, or form is what I'm asking him to do. How can I maximize him if I'm going to play him? The stubbornness on the defensive side of the football drove me absolutely crazy. And I think from O'Connell's comments – Guys, after the Detroit loss, he shared that. Because, like, when he's talking about we got to do this and do that, like, these aren't – no no one's asking Ed to blow up his scheme. 
but they are saying you need to get more pressure. And it felt like then he would come back in, in a game and blitz a little bit more, right? Yeah. But then you'd come back with the PFF stats in the next week, and it would be like he would pull back some more. So I think the most important thing way beyond scheme is adaptability to whoever your pieces are, young, old, whatever, to get them to fit into what they can do best to make this team good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they had to make a change here. Um, whether they were going to do the selfie Val or whatever, you, you knew that they couldn't bring this guy back. And I'm kind of with Judd. I hope that Kevin O'Connell learned from this mistake. And now you got a list of candidates here that you can bring in an interview. I mean, this offense was great. It was top 10 in yards. It was top 10 in points. That's going to chug along. Uh, but this defense, can you get it back to being passable, as we discussed on our full Purple Daily show uh, that's also on this YouTube channel today, that – can you get it back to being just a respectable defense? And if that means that, hey, you kind of got to start from ground zero from a personnel standpoint to a degree, then that's what you have to do. You can't just keep trotting out plotting players and signing plug-and-play veterans. If that means you got to go heavy in the draft. That's what you'll have to do. And I'm, I'm curious the coordinator that they hired to get the right guy in here to fix this defense. Well, I'm looking at the list that we went over on whatever Monday – disrespectfully i do feel kind of bad but i mean why did it take them four days why did they do the press conference why do you feel bad? that list was all awesome. yeah, it was it wasn't an open job yet you know? no, i don't feel bad about that oh i'm never worried about that no i'm just you know, oh no always be looking to replace folks in sports <laughs> i got no problem with that i mean you're trying to replace players and you know what you're right so here's uh here's who's left all right let me let me pull this up i added a couple names to this too so you, we can, we did like 11 names on the show, replacements for Ed Donatel before Ed Donatel was officially unemployed. So uh, we can cross Brandon Staley off. He will be back. We can cross, let's see Jim here. Jim Schwartz was on Jim, your list. Jim Schwartz. I think Raheem Morris, He can because he's, now that Sean McVay is staying, and they kind of already announced their staff changes, at least the guys that are gone, and Raheem is staying. Gerard Mayo. Sounds like he's locking into me. Is he going to be the Patriots defensive coordinator now? He's definitely, they're working yes. on like a multi-year yeah. extension He doesn't want to him. leave. Yep. Yeah. He turned on a chance, I think, to I think to go to Atlanta or, or at least talk to the Falcons about their D.C. job. So, yes, I, I think he wants to stay there. So those names are all off the list here. Let's go through the names that are on the list, the list that we put together. And there's there's other names out there, too. But this is a pretty good place to start when looking at Kevin O'Connell Connections names that the Vikings interviewed last year, grizzled veterans that always are knocking on the door for another shot. Let's okay. start with the obvious again, the obvious, in, and I'll just kind of fly through these. You guys, we can circle back and talk more in depth about some of these, but the obvious internal option remains Mike Pettin. Mm -hmm. Mike Pettin was brought in as another veteran, a former head guy, defensive coordinator, helped the 37-year-old first-year head coach. He's the assistant head coach, probably with an emphasis on defense. Um, so he is the top assistant on the staff. He knows the personnel. You know, in his career as a defensive coordinator, Mike Pettin, about 10 years as a defensive coordinator or a head coach with the Jets and the Browns, five top 10 yardage defenses, although four of them came under Rex Ryan. So it's hard to parse, much like Donatel under Fangio. How do you parse some of this stuff apart, right? Absolutely. Okay, last year's interviews that are still out there, Sean Desai, so Sean Desai actually just interviewed for the Browns job that went to Jim Schwartz. So he still is available. Um, spent last year on the Seahawks staff as the associate head coach and a defensive assistant and helped mm -hmm. with some of those young defenders. That Seahawks defense wasn't perfect, but there were some young guys that kind of popped. He was the Bears defensive coordinator in 2021 before that staff got blown out. Um, was also with the Bears for like eight years before that. So... Pretty young guy, 39 years old. I think they're going to go from, you always hire sort of the opposite, right? They're going to go from like 65-year-old grizzled Ed Donatel, and right. they're going to hire like a 40-year-old, yep. <laughs> right? Yeah, more like a KOC type of type of personality yep. age-wise. Uh, Anthony Weaver is another guy they interviewed last year. So he is 42 years old. He's been with the Ravens the last couple of years, defensive line coach and assistant head coach. He was also the defensive coordinator of the Texans in 2020, so he does have some experience uh, 10 years or so as an NFL uh, coach of some kind. Also spent like six years as a player in the early 2000s. And then there's a couple guys here that haven't like popped up officially, but I'm just connecting dots. Mm -hmm. 
One of them with a connection to Kevin O'Connell is the current Broncos defensive coordinator, Ijiro Ivero, who I believe interviewed or is interviewing for a head coaching job or two right now. But they're going to have a staff shakeup. Sean Payton might come in. So he's kind of employed by the Broncos. Right. Kind of interviewing for head coaching jobs. But Payton but probably may not have a job. Right. So Absolutely. that's one to keep an eye on. The Broncos, even after Fangio, still maintained one of the best defenses in the league uh, under Ivero. And by the way, I did. Our guy Alex Boone knows him really well and had some good things to say about him, too. Doesn't know oh, how he, he would perform like as a head coach or something, but he had. He was close uh, when, when they were in San Francisco together. So Kwesi worked with Avero in San Francisco. KOC worked with him in Los Angeles with the Rams. He was the secondary coach under Sean McVay. So that's that's a Kwesi and a KOC connection to keep an eye on. This one, too, was on our list earlier this week. He's still out there. I think he's interviewing for the Alabama defensive coordinator job. But Jim Leonard, formerly the defensive coordinator at Wisconsin and the interim head coach, He's a 40-year-old young dude, spent 14 years in the NFL as a defensive yeah. back, including with the Jets, where he was teammates with KOC for a couple years. And uh, people have sort of raved, rightfully so, about the job he did collegiately running the Wisconsin defense. That's one to keep an eye on. I'm That's just, I'm not reporting, I'm just connecting dots right. here. I believe that he also um, passed up a few opportunities to go to the pros as a, as a uh, D.C., so, like, he had been pursued before. His allegiance to Wisconsin was so deep, though. But then, and he was going to stay at Wisconsin when Fickle got the job, but I guess it, like, broke down really quickly, and mm. it was just clear that it, it was not going to be a tenable situation. So that would actually make a ton of sense. Like, that fits exactly the age that you're saying, Phil, and and a young, probably aggressive D.C. who's more along the lines of what O'Connell brings on the offensive side. So, like, and if his choice is, okay, I'm going to have to move from, uh, I'm a Midwest guy, and I'm going to have to go to Alabama, or I'm just going to go to the Vikings, I would think the Vikings, like, like that might be the time that a pro job is super attractive to, to him and his family. Now, the Wilfs, I think, can pay whatever they want for a coordinator, but wouldn't Alabama be likely to pay more for a defensive coordinator historically than some NFL teams? Well, don't they possibly. sometimes pay like seven figures for coordinators at some like LSU, Alabama? That's a possibility, but I mean, they can. The Vikings can certainly compete if they want to for that. So that would be an in. But I mean, if this guy, this guy stayed at Wisconsin through thick and thin until now. So I got to think w where he lives is incredibly important, too. Yeah. Another name that we kind of floated briefly on Monday, he's never been a coordinator before, but he is interviewing right now. He's I think he's interviewing today or he did for the Falcons open defensive coordinator job. He's been a head coach, though. Brian Flores. So after the whole Miami debacle ending, he was picked up by Mike Tomlin staff in Pittsburgh as the uh, senior defensive assistant and linebackers coach. And he has a history you know, before the Dolphins job under Bill Belichick for a number of years in New England. Um, never been a coordinator, but he's been a head coach. So I trust I mean, him to be able to organize game plans. And as we saw again this season, the Patriots are super weird. So, like, he probably was a de facto DC for the Patriots. Like, he probably did a lot of those chores. But Belichick doesn't like to name those. It's just very, very weird. Yeah. So, like, I, I wouldn't ding him for that. I guess the question is... And I, I mean, Tomlin scooped him up, but with a lawsuit that I think is still active against the league, would that term turn some teams off? I have no idea. It didn't Personally, turn I, the Steelers off. I don't so. think it should. But um, the other thing, too, that's going to factor into this is what are they looking for? Not just as far as personality goes, but when we're talking scheme, like the three, four. O'Connell can torture this all he wants and say, well, we really didn't play as much 3-4. You guys labeled us a 3-4. But there's no question what the idea was. And, and whatever O'Connell's vision was did not work. They didn't have the right people. They obviously didn't have the right coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, I am not going to be surprised at all if they go back to a 4-3. Number one, if Daniil Hunter's back, flat out, my biggest question, like if, I, if, if I'm O'Connell and I'm his new DC, my biggest question is how can we – put Daniil Hunter back in a starring role. I mean, 
the guy was non-existent at times and, and he had a good PFF year, but he still had 10 and a half sacks. Yeah. Like he's still damn good. Um, again, I think it gets back to the most important thing is not what you call your scheme. It's how do you, if, if Daniil is back, how do you make damn sure that he is a featured star? Yeah. Yep. There's a whole Daniil conversation to be had here at some point too. And then I'll give you the two grizzled veterans, one that wasn't on the list that I'll throw at you guys. Uh, one that definitely was Vic Fangio is continuing to interview for defensive coordinator jobs. Yep. You know, he, he is, if, if you're going to run the Vic Fangio defense, which they tried to with Donatel, you might as well do it with Vic Fangio. Yep. I don't know what the appetite is to run the same scheme, but try to do it better. Or right. if they would just go in a totally different direction. Um, so Fangio has coached six top 10 yardage defenses in the last 11 years. He interviewed with the Panthers. Uh, he is linked to Peyton. He might go back to Denver if Peyton goes to Denver as the defensive coordinator. And then I don't think they're going to go this direction, but he is available now. And he's a longtime defensive mind. Lovey Smith, 64 year old. No, no, thanks. Lovey Smith. No, 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 no. Thank what? you. No love for Lovey. I want a no. I want somebody. <laughs> I no, no, no. I just I can't. I can't do. God yeah. bless. God bless him. But I can't do. Basically, Ed again. You know, in just an aging coordinator. You know, I mean, since the since the Bears had the best defense in the league in 2005, Lovey as either a a head coach or a defensive coordinator has had more bottom five defenses than top five defenses. He's a Tampa two guy. So. I'm not going back to Tampa too well. The Tampa well, two so styles come back around. The Tampa too well is Trucker so hats, 1965. Bell yeah, no, you know what? Shag carpeting, disco, and Tampa <laughs> two. I'm out on all three of those things. Okay. <laughs> Turquoise appliances also out. So I'm sure there's more names out there too. And at some point, the Vikings have been pretty transparent. Like last year, they were just tweeting out the names of people they were interviewing. So yeah. I'm sure they'll continue to be transparent but do do any of those names stand out to you guys you guys have enough of a strong opinion on any of those names to say hmm that guy interesting leonard intrigues me because me too he's at he's at a really good point probably in in his career where he would where this job would make perfect sense um i think he would bring like everything i saw is his players like him he's a really enthusiastic guy he's a very demanding guy um which i think is great that one intrigues me. Uh, the list of aging guys, probably not. Your point, and what, what I was talking about, possibly going back to a uh, 4-3, Fangio, my my guess is that they might just basically abandon ship on the whole idea. Um, You know, I think I think Kevin thought that hiring Ed would, would be an easy bake option. Ed will come here and run a defense that gives me problems and he'll give other teams problems and we'll practice. I mean, in training camp, he talked about this. I want to practice against this defense because it forces you to make decisions quickly. Unfortunately, his players weren't quick and it didn't work at all. Yeah. So um, I think if the conversation is about candidates, there's a fighting chance that the whole Fangio list is out now um, and that they would actually go to a four, three and play, play a defense that again, I think most importantly starts with this. Daniil Hunter being featured. Um, we do know after his comments today, the odds of Patrick Peterson being back at cornerback are very low. So, how about that? Yeah, I don't think he's coming think, back now. Well, he he did praise Kirk in that podcast, and so just for people that didn't see this, I'm going to pull up the uh, so Patrick Peterson on his podcast today he praised it before he dropped a bomb on. Him. He called him a top ten quarterback and said you can you can win a bunch of games with Kirk Cousins. But he also said, uh, and I'm, I'm getting this transcript from Chris Thomas in Pioneer Press. Patrick Peterson on his own podcast on the Cousins fourth down check down. Quote, when I saw it, the only thing I could think of was he must have not known what down it was. On the sideline, it just took me aback because I was just shocked that we threw the ball three yards when we needed eight. <laughs> Jeez. You know, walk back into that locker room. Yeah. Well, especially I know Kirk, you- Kirk's Teflon, man. He doesn't care. Everson Griffin called him ass on social yeah. media, and he just walked right back in the next year. Hey, Kirk. The issue. How you doing, buddy? The the issue that I do have, though, is it's like, Patrick, your side of the ball was awful. Like, let's not. Like, he's. I he, agree acknowledged, with what... he acknowledged that in the podcast. Okay. That's what good. I saw. Okay. Yeah. yeah he was... didn't, like, go on his podcast and say, our defense was lights out lights against out. the Giants, well, and Kirk talk- was garbage. 
it got frustrating because there were times during the se- season when they all were t- talking about, yeah, we we bend, but we don't break. We give up all these yards, but we don't break. It's like actually, you do break quite a bit. Yes, In fact, they you're break. Shattered on the floor right now. They break. They break more than most defenses. Yes. So who who do you think personnel wise? Let's pencil in. Who are you pretty damn sure uh, is starting next year? Boy, for the for the defense, I think mm-hmm. Hunter. I think if, if if he's back, I'm pretty and and like until we hear that there's been a falling out or that he wants a new contract or that I I think he's starting. Um, I think Zadarius is gone. I think Patrick Jones will get a chance. I think Wanham, he's a backup type of guy, but you know. He was not good again in this scheme. Dalvin Tomlinson, if he's back, Josh Metellus. Metellus is an interesting one, and and apparently he's beloved because yeah. he got the captain C. That's he's a good great. special teams player. He's great on special teams. You know what? Keep him there. Um, I so I think Harrison Smith's back. Like mm-hmm. of that whole list of guys who might I be cut, so. yeah. I think Harrison Smith's back. Ideally, opening day. Lewis seen is starting by him. Yeah. So you would have uh an Asamoah has got to be one of your starting linebackers, right? Cuz you're going to get you're probably going to get rid of two starting linebackers. So you, let's say let's say they're playing a 4-3. Asamoah is an outside linebacker. And right? then yeah, and then Lewis seen coming back. You you your cornerbacks, man. They're all free agents. Duke Shelley free well, agent. They're going to sign Duke Shelley, right? Well, and can Booth come back and stay on the field i mean that's a he's a second round pick that's a that's a guy who should compete contend for a starting job provided he doesn't get hurt again who's your slot corner you don't he's not in the roster because you might say well duke shelley but duke shelley no. was not good in the slot with chicago right no cam dantzler he, cam dantzler can still play a little bit but oh that's kind of a weird well, deal at the end of the year yeah, I was going to say the whole thing with him and he had a family thing or that's what they said and he just sort of disappeared. That was all very odd to me. Uh, I'm curious if he's but I'm curious what the situation is. But yeah, if Duke Shelley starts, he's yeah. got to be an outside guy. I Caleb don't think Evans. I don't think your slot guy is on the roster. I think you're right. A Caleb and, had three concussions. He's just a big time question mark. And then I think I think Harrison Phillips and Dalvin Tomlinson they're under contract. They're good. They're good Tomlinson's players. not. They're back. He he's he is oh, he he signed a two year contract with two, I believe, void years. So he has mm. to be re signed. Harrison Phillips, if I'm not mistaken, is back. You're, yeah, Harrison Phillips is definitely back. And Dalvin, uh, so Dalvin Tomlinson, if he comes back, would go back to playing sort of the yeah. Linval Joseph nose tackle role. That's right. I'm my mistake. I was so the the Vikings. I think have to pay because they did some void years. Yes. They did some void years. So that's Two what it is. Years, so right? He yeah. costs seven and a half million to your cap, but he's not on your team. Okay. Yep. yep. Interesting. But I didn't and see so- but I didn't see in the three four, I didn't see much from Phillips, Harrison Phillips or Tomlinson that m- made me think, oh, they're ideal fits, can't go back to a four three. Yeah. And they're not, like they're just they're not I think Tomlinson has shown some bouts of being dominant at times, but he's going to be 29. Those guys yeah. are, they're good players, but they're not like, they're not irreplaceable players. Absolutely. So it's a, it's a lot, it's a lot of question marks, but if you just get faster and a little younger yeah, and have a, just a more organized, cohesive scheme, how many times have smart people that break down film pointed out, they're like doing a, a Giants breakdown of look at this great play by the Giants, and then as an aside, it's like, what the hell are the Vikings doing? I've heard it from Sean Payton, Kurt Warner in the last week. Just as they praise the other team, they're like, and I don't know what the Vikings are doing defensively. You've got guys running one thing over here, and then like they're leaving this area open. It's like guys are running different plays or schemes. So if they can just shore that up and get faster and younger. Does it go from the 31st defense to the 19th defense? And now it's like at you least workable. If you create enough cap space, which they're going to have to to do, I wonder if you can make your one, like if, if you have one splash uh, signing in March to potentially do, I wonder if you could sign a cornerback coming out of his first contract. And it wouldn't necessarily be a name guy who, who were like, oh, yeah, he was great. 
But, you know, there's a lot of guys that develop at that time just to give you some stability there. Because it just it feels like we've entered a phase now between injuries and, as you said, Phil, guys uh, at, at the end of their contracts where the stability at corner is sort of scary. Yeah, It's non-existent. And that's one spot in this league you do not want to have non-existent stability. So I wonder if that could be the one pl- – the one place where they really go for a what they, they would consider to be with a 25 year old player, so more of a splash signing. Yeah, it could be. That's right. Could speculation. be. It is. I love I mean, reckless I, speculation season. Oh, Look at how speculation. Yeah. So, well, if you are just kind of jumping into this this live oh. stream here on the Purple Daily YouTube channel, a thank you for carving out some of your afternoon to be with us here. If you could. Uh, Click the subscribe button and the like button. It'll help spread the word about this daily Vikings community that you guys are helping us build. And uh, obviously the breaking news is Ed Donatel fired. One more question. What did you make of, they almost certainly knew what they were going to do yesterday, Quasi and KOC. And maybe that's part of the reason why I think KO, I think those guys really wear these, these hard decisions that just you can just see it on their face when they had to cut a bunch of players out of training camp. It was like, oh my god. Yeah, it's really you know? not that hard either. I like to tell them, hey, enjoy us early. <laughs> well, but okay, but you are a sociopath that builds <laughs> relationships are. with like only four people in your life and a dog. And Kevin O'Connell is building I love you relationships That's with true. 53 That's guys true. in the locker room. Touche, and Kevin. I don't have a lot in common. And so he then ha- he has to spend a full year telling Ed how much he loves and appreciates Ed. Ed, he's the empowerment guy, right? And then when it's all over, he has to fire Ed, and it probably sucks for him. But what did you make of the timing of this, them just sort of doing their media thing yesterday, almost certainly knowing what they were going to do, and then 24 hours later, they send the release out? You know, they pretty much, I thought, telegraphed it. So, like, it's clear what the strategy was. It it doesn't bother me. I mean, this is how this league operates it would have been nice if they had just said, we've decided to move on, which they could have done. We'll take your questions on this and put it to bed. Um, some teams don't work like that. And so, yes, that's preferable. But, like, do I do I see this as a big demerit against them? No. It's been done before. It'll be done again. I, I think the demerit is the, the responsibility. Um, and this is the one thing I would have liked to have heard them if they had l- announced that Ed was being let go on uh, Wednesday. The one thing is... Kevin has to wear this. Kevin mm-hmm. O'Connell has to wear this. This was his choice, his guy. Um, and so I guess from an accountability standpoint, I would have liked to have him been able to been questioned about why didn't you make a change after that Detroit game when it was clear that things weren't going well? And more importantly, just what did what did you learn from this? Mm-hmm. So I, I will say that. I, I do think that Kevin O'Connell should not, just because he's likable and did a good job, I don't think he should be given a pass of, yeah, glad Ed's gone. KOC can get this right. KOC's the guy that got it wrong in the first place. And yeah, I think I, that's a very fair thing. I think it's a little cowardly, to be completely honest, especially for two guys who all preach accountability and speak about, hey, we're going to learn from this and want to be better. And you knew his fate and you didn't want to face the music. And you have a GM that says, I want to say less. And then all of a sudden you make the decision 24 hours later. And now you don't have to answer for it until your next media availability, which who knows what it's going to be. To be Come honest, on. I think it's a little cowardly. It, it's Come kind on. of cowardly for, for a coaching staff and for a new regime that wants to speak about accountability. I think that's a pretty cowardly move. Just quickly. I I'm with Declan on this. Just quick. Quasi showed us who he was in the off season when, you know, he was going to be the non Rick, right? Like Rick didn't talk. So he was going to be the guy to talk. And then USA Today wrote one thing in which Quasi, I thought, was pretty upfront. Yeah. And he disappeared after that. So, like, yeah. Qua- I guess I'm not surprised, Dex, because Quasi showed us who he is. He might be a very smart guy. He might be a great football guy. I got no clue yet. But when you have one thing in USA Today come out and you're like, okay, peace out, I'm done. They, they, The PR department had to convince him to talk after the Hawkinson trade. Yeah. He didn't want to talk. Yeah, sorry, pal. Dude, so, these are multi-billion-dollar yeah. franchises. You need to at least inform people and answer questions about what's happening. Well, and his whole thing of now, like I like to be in the background. That's not how you. Ah, uh, 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 that you you took this job. You are the GM of the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, I like to be in the background. You know, I like to play drums. I'm not going to be the front man. 
Yeah, but you're Mick Jagger, dude. Got to answer well, the question. Didn't Phil Collins drum? Yeah. You could be a drummer and a front man. Well, you're right. Phil Collins. Oh, Phil Collins was great. Although, <laughs> although <laughs> Phil came out from behind the skins eventually, right? Yeah, I think but he did. I, I think Phil said, I'm done with he... the skins. <laughs> and then grabbed the mic. Love Phil Collins. I mean, yeah, D- Dave Grohl, man. Drummer of Nirvana and lead singer of... Of but Mike. also, but also, he put the skins behind him. Damn That's right. That's true. That's true. But sometimes he'll go back there once in a while. Oh God, you know? he's marvelous. Absolutely. Um, one of my well, okay, one more question for you guys here, because we're you know it's it's kind of funny where like we're talking about all the candidates as if everyone would have interest. Like Vic Fangio, you go go have a conversation. But if you are a candidate and you're looking at this from your perspective, okay, I'm going to go and become the defensive coordinator of what what. Right. What's the personnel? What are we? If you're an offensive coordinator, you're saying, okay, I can, all right, I can make it work with Kirk Cousins, one of the top 10, 15 quarterbacks. I got Justin Jefferson. Wes Phillips turned down an opportunity to go work with Justin Herbert earlier today. The Chargers requested an interview with Wes Phillips, and Wes Phillips was like, love me some Los Angeles, love me some Justin Herbert, but I got Justin Jefferson. I've got Christian Derrissaw, Brian O'Neill. We're building TJ Hawkinson. We're building something here on the defensive side of the ball. It's not going to be as easy to sell this to candidates. So you might not get your first or second choice. You might, you might have to settle for someone that's getting their first shot, maybe as a defensive coordinator, as opposed to someone who's got some more experience. Cause you know, where you rank and what your personnel situation is, it's, it's not, it's not super desirable. So the one thing that would excite me, though, is is this, or actually two, two things. One is I know that I'm going to be given freedom because KOC is not going to micromanage my defense because he clearly is um, always, be, or not always, a lot of times focused on offense. The other thing that would excite me is it's it's abundantly clear now that they're going to, going to have to be massive changes in personnel, as we have discussed a lot, and that would excite me. Because, like, if I bring a defense that's aggressive and swarming and young and fast, like, there's a the, – the blank canvas nature of, of this is exciting. I think one of the things as Vikings followers that we have become involved in thinking, too, is because Zim's identity was defense. And there was so many of the players who were here for so long, Harrison Smith, Kendricks, go down that entire list, right? But, Phil and Dex, we've talked about this a lot, and and that is – You know, keeping guys on defense year after year after year like they're a quarterback is not really a great idea or sustainable. So if I can come in here and jettison guys left and right and and we can draft guys and we can pave a path in which I'm going to be, by the way, given a ton of credit, if Ed Donatel's replacement makes this defense serviceable to good, you're going to get a ton of credit. So I agree with all, all your points. And yes, there might be some guys who balk. But I think that the selling point is, dude, we are going to make major changes. If you want to run a 4-3, that's probably fine. And this is going to be your baby. Yeah, I'm not convinced that they're going to move to a 4-3. I think Kevin O'Connell believes in this style of defense. And I think he he did not love the way that Ed Donatel organized and taught and carried it forward. So... It wouldn't shock me if they tried to keep a similar scheme, but just had someone in here that knew how to mold it a little bit better than Ed Donatel did sure. last year. But we'll see. We'll see. All right. Any other final thoughts from you guys on this emergency episode? We will do feedback Friday tomorrow as usual. This is just a little breaking news in the afternoon. We felt compelled to jump on. No, no. I just think that um, I- I'm just glad it's done now. Because you knew it was coming, and it was yeah. sort of a ridiculous exercise. Um, I didn't know if they they were going to try a f- late Friday coup. You know, oh, we fired at oh. Donatel. It's nine o'clock on Friday, and all the reporters are drunk, or what yeah. they they were going Five to try. So in. that that would be a disaster. Yeah. And, you, and then you got to fumble around in the surly. Oh. You don't want to spill the surly on stumbling the stumbling back to Manhattan's in from Rabbit. It's the worst oh, the thing rabbit. that could happen. I don't. I wish we could talk first about world selfish. I think I might be there this weekend. All right, that's all I got. All right. Thanks for hanging out with us, you guys. Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. And being better than the 31st ranked defense (laughs) is uh, step one, I guess.